Well, hi there. Today, we are going to talk about estimating areas. Now, there's, there's a couple different ways that, that we estimate areas. Sometimes we're given a shape and uh, the measurements of the shape are sort of, um, there's something that we could round. Let's say we had a shape that looked like this. Okay, and they said that this side was 2.3 millimeters and this side was uh, 7.9 millimeters. And they said estimate the area of that. Well, in that particular case, you would just round 7.9 up to 8 and you'd round 2.3 down to 2 and you'd take 2 times 8 and your answer would be approximately 16 millimeters squared. Now that's one way to estimate area. Now there's other ways to estimate area and that's kind of what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about Tucker's theorem and Tucker's theorem uh, has to do with uh, figuring out weight per square inch or per square millimeter or per square centimeter. It's finding the measurement per a, a given square unit. So this is Tucker's theorem. Tucker stood on a scale on one foot and he wondered how many pounds per square inch the scale was supporting. So what did he do? He found some graph paper with one inch squares and he traced his foot on the graph paper. Does it sound too hard? Next he counted the following the number of whole squares within the trace and the number of half squares within his traced foot. Tucker added the whole and half squares together and he found out that there were approximately 33 one inch squares. So he took his weight which was 115 pounds and he divided it by the number of square inches his foot covered. And that comes up with, if you do the division, this is 115 pounds divided by 33 inches, 3.52 inches, 3.52 pounds per inches. So for every inch of his foot that was on that scale, that scale was supporting 3.52 pounds. Now, if you have graph paper at home, you can do this. If not, why don't you ask your teacher for some graph paper and demonstrate Tucker's theorem and attach the graph paper to your notes. All you have to do is trace your foot, count the number of whole squares, then count the number of half squares. Remember the half squares will have to be times two to make a whole square, right? So if you had 10 half squares, you'd have five whole squares. I would like to have you do this. I think it would be an interesting thing to do and it would add to your understanding of estimating area. Another example, and I don't think you can probably do this one, uh, to keep a 500, p 500 pound piano from making marks on the floor, the owner put six inch diameter casters under the legs of the piano. Now I'm quite sure that your folks do this at home. They probably have chairs and stuff on the carpet that they don't want to have dig holes in the carpet or make marks. Use Tucker's method to find out how many pounds per square inch the floor must support, or I guess even how many pounds per square inch these casters have to support. So here's a drawing, and, and you know if you look in, uh, look in your text, you'll see this drawing. But I thought this is kind of nice to have it right in front of you. Okay, so here's a caster. The caster is six in diameter. Now in this case, these happen to be centimeter blocks, so it's not quite the same as inches, but we're using it for illustration. If this is six across, then I went through, and this is six across, I went through and I marked all of the full or nearly full squares with X's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. There are 24 full or nearly full squares. Okay. Then you have to look at the half squares. So you've got one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight half squares, which ends up to be uh, each half square is a half of a whole, so you divide it by two, so you end up with four full squares. So 24 full, eight half squares ends up to be 24 plus four, which is about 28 approximately. So three coasters, legs at 28 square inches each, three times 28 is 84. Then you use Tucker's theorem, okay? You take the 500 pounds and divide it by the 84 square inches, and you do the math, and you end up with approximately. Now, notice 6 times 84 is 504, and we were trying to get 500. But 504 is very, 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 very close to 500. So we're going to go with approximately 6 pounds per square inch. That 500, 500 pound piano is going to be. That's a lot of pounds per square inch, actually, if you think about it. That means that in like six square inches, there's 30 pounds. That's a lot, no, 36 pounds. Okay, last thing to remind you of. Remember, this is an average. Weight isn't always evenly distributed, so it can be kind of an approximation per square inch too. If you realize, I don't know if you looked at a piano recently, but pianos are not all exactly the same weight all the way around. So there might be a leg or two that has more weight on it than uh, perhaps another one does. But we're talking about approximation, so we're kind of evening it up. I hope this was helpful. Have a great day. Thanks a lot for listening.